Alright, uh, before we get on with the video, I just want to quickly give a shout out to our newest member of the channel, Christina Luz Dark. And sorry if I butchered that name. I just want to give a quick shout out. I'm pretty sure you, uh, they came from Casual Chucks Live last night that we did, and um, they decided to support the channel. So thank you guys so much. And if you want to be a member, you can always do so. It is as cheap as a bag of chips and a drink. Nothing is forced. But I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting this, and I hope you guys enjoy the new series that me and Casual Chuck are doing, uh, divulging into Filipino type stuff. And what best to do by starting the series off with the age-old question is p-pop copying k-pop i hope you enjoy we have a, a video here that we are gonna watch and uh, let's see if it leads to some questions to some stories jay here uh personally uh, requested it to me that we watch it together i haven't seen it yes. he has not seen it too so it's called um is p-pop copying k-pop by jessica lee i've actually seen some of her vlogs uh she's a really good content creator and she actually did a few collabs with sb19 yeah i know have she's you? yeah i saw that like i didn't check the video but i checked the channel it's like oh wow she's actually like a very popular influencer so i'm excited to see this so so let's go ahead and dive into it. Hey guys, it's Jessica here. So recently I've stumbled upon this radio in Korea and I heard this Korean music critic Kim Young Dae speaking about Kim Young Dae and also P-pop briefly. So he was talking about groups that were listed in the top 50 social chart on Billboard this year. So I might be, hold on, I might be a little bit uh, ignorant, but is she Filipino herself? Um, as far as I know, she's Korean, full Korean. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought, because she had more yeah. of a Korean look to her. All right. Yeah, but um, I think she's like one of those vloggers who likes to like embrace the Filipino culture, and she's been doing a really right. great job. Like, right, right. So she's Korean, but does she live in Korea or is she Korean and living in Philippines? That's I, one. I think she's been living here now for for a few years now. So right. I'm not sure. I could be wrong though. But uh, all of her content is all about you know Filipino culture. She even has videos wherein she tries uh, Filipino jobs, odd jobs, and oh, it's wow. quite entertaining. Yeah. I definitely gotta dive down more of her stuff, but let's let's continue. BTS, Blackpink, and Seventeen, and there was one P-pop group which was SB19. But da, 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 at the end course. of his speech, he yeah. mentioned that technically, we could say that P -pop all of kings. these four groups are K-pop groups because SB19 uh -oh. followed the successful K-pop business model to succeed okay. in the Philippines. He also mentioned that when SB19 just debuted last 2018, the controversy whether we should call them a K-pop group or a P-pop group because the kind of uh, business model that they followed. I noticed like going back, that seemed to be when uh, SB19 were first coming up, like they kept getting like labeled as K-pop, Rob. And some people were actually, I, I'm not sure if I'm correct by this, but uh, actually thought they were Korean and, and not actually Filipino. Is that, am I correct by this? Um, No, uh, I think what people, what bashers or, or what skeptics are actually saying is that I think uh, they're saying uh, SB18 is just a, a ripoff or a copy right, of, of right, right. just basically copying their stuff because SB19 were known to have used the, the K-pop business model, training method, and marketing oh. strategy because, right. um, you know, about, I'm sure you know a little bit about ShowBT, right? ShowBT yeah, is yeah, a yeah. Show BT, yeah. company that was built by a Korean, um, a former yeah. idol, actually, from the from the Korea, uh, from, right, from right. Korea, and then went to the Philippines, established uh, an entertainment company. First, they only... Um, they only wanted to have entertainers, right? And he noticed that, oh, right. these Filipinos Filip Filip are actually talented. Let's make SB19. So that's when SB19 came together. Uh -huh. Skeptics basically are saying, hey, Koreans taught you, you're just copying K-pop. And I don't, I actually don't blame them for that because right. SB19, when they were starting, um, they did a bunch, a lot of Korean performances. Right. You know, they did a lot of BTS, Icon, and all that stuff. And right, right, yeah. they were genuinely fans of K-pop. So I can see like why people would say like that they are copying K-pop because of the whole business model that is like the business model, the training method and stuff like that. But I can also see why SB19 themselves did that as well, because there's always when you're starting out before even being known, there's always some strategy or something that you're going to try and do to capture the, the eyes of people first and then kind of mold it into your own. So I can see why they would like do K-pop uh, stuff and stuff just to try and get out there. But I feel like they have now 
now kind of pushed the boundaries and moved a lot away from the k-pop stuff so if anyone is saying like they're still quote unquote copying k-pop or following the business model i definitely don't think so but i can also see why they would say that but still you don't need to bash on people like we all have our own ways of rising defend yeah i don't know absolutely man and people always have something to say about something um that oh, can't 100%. really be controlled free, everyone, freedom of speech <laughs> yeah everyone's always at 100 percent uh like knows everything apparently <laughs> the strategy they used are all inspired by k-pop however all the five members of sb19 are filipinos and they speak Kogi members the get it right. and so it's technically also a p-pop of course, at the end, SB19 is still labeled as P-pop because their market is within the Philippines, Philippines and the Filipinos. Yeah. He then goes on to talk about these three types of culture technology for those K-pop business groups to succeed in a global scale. First okay. of all, making the Korean members of a certain K-pop group to speak foreign languages that made a separate album in Japanese so that they can mm. also grow a fan base in Japan. That would be an example. The second strategy is including some foreign members in the K-pop group. So this was done in groups like EXO. So many groups are like I have heard of EXO. Chinese members and Japanese members within They were the big. So they do that Still to is. grow a fan base <laughs> in the targeted country. And the third step, which is the last, which I would say SB19 falls under, is forming a group with only the local members of the country, just following okay. the K-pop technology or K-pop business model. So in this sense, when someone asks you, is P-pop copying K-pop? Then you could say yes, just looking at the ah, group SB9. Ah. Bini or BGYO, um, the two P-pop groups from ABS-CBN, as far as so I she know, got hate they for that. <laughs> also follow that K-pop um, training model. You know, they had like Korean teachers and everything. However, I don't ABS think CN. the conversation it just ends like that just so simply because we have to look through the history of P-pop as well. Mm. Oh, now we're getting into history. Okay. I wonder if this okay. will follow like, like, because you made your own history video, which I haven't seen yet. I wonder if this is going to get into some of that stuff. Yeah, maybe we don't have to see that other video. Maybe she's going to cover that here. Let's see. Maybe. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and also I want to say something about uh, that Korean critic. I forgot the name. You said that earlier, but it was a name I can barely remember now. Saying that P-pop copied K-pop is, is, I would say that uh, wasn't K-pop copying the pop culture? I know, 100%. Like, Two? are we now saying <laughs> right? K-pop? copying like michael jackson with with pop you know because he was considered considered like a pop star right so yeah like that's king, exactly what k-pop is jackson doing considered the king of pop k-pop eh? no oh. okay now, oh, now yeah, okay. Into something, i see right. what you did there i see what you did there <laughs> so who knows you know they could have been you know so <laughs> <laughs> okay that's a really smart one so right there. At, at the end of the day man uh just as how it is like you can see anything as copying anyone but at the end of the day like critics and Bash is always going to say you're copying this you're copying that you're doing this you're doing that no one person built the model for any of this it's just people coming up with it making music having fun I don't know I don't know why people want to bash and say they're always copying people let's let people have fun exactly man and also um, we could even go even farther like you know let's say yeah. like K-pop copied pop right American pop let's just say that but yeah. you know American pop also copied the classics they, there's a lot of samples there and it's 100%. just it, it has been there you know sing and dance it has all, all, always been there ever since the dawn of time you know, entertainment exactly. is human nature. So I don't see why Koreans would say K-pop was copied by P-pop when exactly. the fact is yeah. that they also copy pop in general basically everybody copies everyone you know yeah, it's just uh not uh not an exact copy but an improvement or you know adding their own taste to it to make it their own people and it's completely always, okay 100 percent. people always like they start from something like they get motivated from something like for example for me i you could kind of say that i was copying artists that i listened to when i wanted to start making music and then you could say i was copying reactors because many other people react i saw other people do that and so then i jumped on the bandwagon like i feel like the you can in this day and age it's really hard to be original like a hundred percent original because everyone's always doing like everything um unless you get some some rare type of niche that isn't done before which is probably already been done before anyway you just don't know it's been done before um then it's hard not to quote unquote copy but yeah absolutely that makes absolute sense so yeah all right let's go ahead and dive into the history of p-pop let's get it p-pop or pinoy pop is a type of music originating from the opm genre or 
original Filipino music. Original. One iconic yep. P-pop group uh, from the 60s and 70s I know is the Apu Hiking Society. Not oh yeah, I need them. Would be the golden age of Filipino music. Obviously, I've so never I heard this. This is around the time when territory I've never heard of. Iconic. Yo, Anak was really big. Um, it was like an anthem that actually penetrated uh, internationally. Yeah, this song had right. translations of different languages all across the world. So it was it was kind of big. It's like the map of the 80s, if you know what I mean. Oh, so, right. Okay. So pretty much as many was able to do an anak um, for, for the 20th century. So uh, the premise of the song is actually similar to MAPA. It's, it's, all, about, uh, it's all about family uh, and, and the importance of, yeah. of your parents and, and the bond of the family. And this song, my dad knows this. When he was young, he used to sing this. He used to hear this on radios. And also my oh, other really? Korean friends are older. Koreans knew this. Korean friends, they also know this song. So uh, There was a Korean translation of it, a uh, Korean iteration. That's why. Oh, wow. So, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I would say this is such an iconic song. I have to say, like globally, mid 1990s in the P-pop history is the time when Moonstar debuted. Filipino pop Moonstar. rock. You know, I love their. Yeah, Moonstar. They're a rock band. Oh, I don't think I've heard Filipino uh, rock before. To be honest, Filipino rock is also it also hits different, man. You you should Filipino you should you should rock. try diving into it. I want to in dive future. into that because that sounds cool. That sounds actually cool. Are we getting into some like Filipino Elvis type stuff when it comes to? Filipino rock? <laughs> yeah, something like that. You know, I, I would name a few. Zach Tabudlo, oh, okay. Adi. Those are really good artists here and my favorite too. Definitely have to check this out. ...of the song Panalangi by Apply in Society. 2000s, um, my generation, Gen Z, is the time when artists like... 2000s, and okay. And She's younger than JR, I expected. Uh, ...debuted. Now we've come to 2010s. These groups include Manila 48, MNL 48, a sister group Never of heard. the J-pop age. KB48. And here we have oh, the famous SB19. So mm -hmm. when SB19 mm -hmm. first debuted, I reacted mm -hmm. to the baby song. Fire. We can check out um what I said so, in that video, you know, why my wasn't that debut Tillaluha though? That's what I've been or was it go up? Because I'm confused yeah. about what the debut was. Well, I hereby name you a true 18, my friend, because you're absolutely right. Oh, I'm um, what? Yeah, Tilaluha indeed was indeed was their uh, debut song, um, and right. that didn't do very well. And I think that's was one of the biggest reasons why they were labeled as K-pop cop copycat because the music video itself yeah. they weren't seen there. Um, it's full of Korean act actors, so uh, uh, why would they use Korean actors, right, for a Tagalog song? So ah, uh, I see, I yeah. see where where people so didn't do. There didn't do so well it didn't do so well it was one but of the I, reasons why they, they they almost disbanded i also heard go up initially didn't do well right until someone reposted it on twitter or was that something to that effect yes that's absolutely right um go up was Ooh. their last shot uh, so they called yeah. and um they posted their music video it was fine just like the laluha it was like an okay uh performance yeah. not even 100k just a few thousands of views until not until they posted their their dance practice session uh, uh, their dance right. practice video. So when they posted that, uh, yeah, the, it was their moves that really sold um, SB19 uh, to the public. Um, people oh, were like, very impressed. Like they can sing and dance too. So yeah, that's why they blew up. The peep up history she was trying to show was just really just scratching yeah. the surface. She didn't go into detail. She skipped a lot uh, of stuff. But um, and that's where you go into detail in your video, right? Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and see. Let's see how it goes. Questions were and everything. By the time I remember being very surprised by. The people behind SB19, you know, I know they're Koreans because it's a Korean company because people might not really appreciate it, you know, but then you did not have to worry at all because SB19 was a huge success. And mm. as a Korean and Facts. also as someone who used to be in the K-pop industry and also Ooh. someone who lived in the Philippines she for was. really long, I'm so happy that they worked. <laughs> not only in the Philippines now because they were enlisted in the Billboard top 50 social charts so that means that they're way, way more than they've done like way more than that now yeah absolutely that was a <laughs> you, read, you read my mind man that's <laughs> something that i'm very proud of and then we have the binny if you guys didn't know i actually auditioned for binny <laughs> and she i did. passed all photo shoot and also as assigned groups Ooh. If you're curious about that audition process story, please check out this video with the huge success of the K-pop idol model. Now the boundary of what is K-pop and what is not 
has become more clear, and the factors that made it this K-pop model would be first of all strategic talent management, and I've gone through this, so I really know this well. Her English is really good. I'm just I, I was for a second I was just thinking about how good English speaking she is. Then. <laughs> yeah, she's really good. She can also speak uh, some Tagalog too. Oh, so, wow! Di- her dialect, damn, that's dope. Yeah. Mop, and they go through this severe training. Second of all, how they manage their social media and also their relationship with their fans. I feel like this is also one of the biggest factors. I feel like, hold on, I feel like it doesn't have to be a K-pop model. Like, you don't have to brand it as a K-pop model to, like, uh, engage with your fans and have a re- certain relationship with your fans a certain type of way. Like, I feel like, I don't know, is that just me? Like, how can you brand something? Or is it just like a certain model that K-pop people follow when it comes to engaging the fans? I don't know. I think it's the entire package of how, of how they manage their artists and uh, how they are right. being marketed. To be honest, as far as it's ba- based on my research, the uh, K-pop style of, of uh, handling their artists actually also came yeah. from the Japanese. Um, the idol culture originated oh, right. from from the Japanese. They have all these, you know, idol culture with this strict training as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, K-pop just kind of uh, adapted that and right. they injected the p the pop culture style to it and that's yeah. what made them go boom you know one thing i do want to say and i do want to show respect to it um is how vigorous the choreography and training can go into the like not just k-pop but p-pop and all that just like the choreography the dancing like they literally train like they're in the military or something like True. i couldn't do that i couldn't do that type of stuff so mad respects indeed they, they are also put in some crazy um unrealistic diet uh plans yeah 100 percent. it's like yeah oh you want to be a k-pop or a p-pop star yeah it's just worse than being in the military like <laughs> it could be bro j-pop yeah, j-pop just... then gay cape gay oh my god i just said k-pop i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry guys i just think that is uh that is embarrassing <laughs> Uh oh! <laughs> All right, that's absolutely fine. We we'll make mistakes. I'm sure they know what you're trying to say. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's why we need that meme. The banana, you know, the violin meme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Third of all is what I mentioned in the intro: the localized products to move forward to a bigger success, to a global success. Okay. So now Influence I would like K-pop. to come down to the most important question of this conversation, which is: Is P-pop copy? Being K-pop or P-pop being inspired by K-pop inspired. a good thing? The answer to this question, I think, would depend on what kind of person so. you are. So one positive. Oh, that's that's really cool. Uh, it depends on what kind of person you are. So yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> <If you're>, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually that's bars right there like if you react yeah, negatively is. then that means you're a negative person you don't appreciate stuff you know that's the grass. how you react is tells more about how you, the person you are you know exactly but like bars a situation could be dire it could be really really bad but it all depends on how you react on the situation it yeah. applies to anything right no 100% the positive thing that I could think of is that with the innovation of K-pop business model Filipino artists and musicians can use this as a motivation to improve their music and performances. This is because people are constantly looking for new inspiration and this new, a fresh idea. It's the same with anything. So, like, so it's the same. You can say with K-pop, uh, P-pop, or with rap and hip-hop, uh, any type of genre. There's always going to be artists and people that inspire, get inspired by something, and then they take that inspiration and mold that into their own type of mold. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. I, that's that's another thing that I don't get with these people saying like it's. K-pop copying uh, people. I mean, it just goes back to the whole, it's not copying more or less like because it's hard to be original nowadays. It's more or less inspiration. You take inspiration from something, you build upon that, you make it your own thing. So it's not just people and K-pop. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a really good point. A topic that interests you. So it can be in the boundary of a culture. So SB19, you can get inspired by that K-pop business model. The mm. second positive thing that I could think of is that because it's Asian culture as well from different True. cultures is also something to celebrate and this kind of diversity in musical styles reflects the many faces of our musical heritage so for example k-pop is also actually influenced by different types there of you go that was that's, that's, that's what I was saying Drop the ball. <laughs> yeah man where the world has become so globalized it's so hard to set a 
clear boundary between different cultures out here because we are just so influenced by each other now. Exactly. Yeah, uh, to be honest, it came. It it all boils down to this, basically. Yeah. K-pop is Korean pop. P-pop is Filipino pop. It's basically music that came from a specific country. Do you agree? Right? No, hundred percent. That's why it's called K-pop. J-pop, P-pop. It's just, you know, if it's pop within the Philippines, then it's P-pop. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. It's not all the same thing, but because they do sound a bit different, but it's, it's all just, it's all pop. You know, it's just all pop. And then each different country just label it, okay, P-pop to help people know that, okay, this is pop from the Philippines. This is pop from the K- Korea and pop from Japan. So Exactly. People are just overthinking. <laughs> 100%. This is the process of us moving towards unity in culture. So Facts. K-pop originally Hashtag is unity in culture. American pop Absolutely. that combined with some stars in J-pop actually and in those spaces they ended up you can even tie that unity and culture really- and you can even tie, tie that into what we're doing now culture clash culture clash absolutely that is sick man boom and yeah. you just tie that into and it all just ties into one thing it's unity clash we should all come together and clash and be unified you know, not just be going like, oh, this is Korean, this is J- uh, Japanese, this is Western, blah, blah, blah. No, we're all one. We're all human. Okay. And we should unite. I should I should be pres- president or something. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, man. You should run for... <laughs> <laughs> run for you're, Australia. You're good at this. <laughs> uh, okay. Facts. Like Korean, which is very hard to explain in a few words <laughs> because you have to know like the whole aspects of Korean history and culture, traditions and all that they added that element up and it becomes a whole new genre of k-pop so what i wanted to highlight is that this diversity in culture is something that we really have to appreciate but what's the downside to it and this all goes back to the question of filipino identity so with the consumption of k-pop music types how can filipino artists See, that's another thing as well also the identity issue going on there's a lot of identity issues and people like brand themselves as one certain thing and so they're not happy if it's something else you know what i mean so it all also depends on your own identity if you have an identity issue for example like just take it for example maybe there's koreans out there they're like oh i don't like p-pop because it's too similar to k-pop and then there might be filipinos out there i'm not saying you or, or anyone specific that might be saying like oh i don't like k-pop because there's too much to p-pop and that just comes under a whole identity thing instead of branding it as an identity you should brand it as more of a music in general not just oh it's this culture so it's this you know what i mean yeah man you should we should be boxing as, a, as an artist you shouldn't be boxing yourself in, in you know exactly you should be flexible you should be ready to evolve that's the only constant change in the world you know change you got to change and, every oh. time maintain that filipino personality or filipino style and to answer that we have to ask another question of what is the Filipino style? Because OPM, just like K-pop, is also inspired by different cultures. Why? I really like what Gracie said here. Um, Samsung reverse engineered Sony earphones or car phones. Um, some with uh, same with music. If yeah, an idea works, that. people would try it. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. No, hundred percent. If an idea works, you stick with it, you run with it, and you evolve it in your own way. You know, that's how things get made. Is Philip- original. What is really Filipino okay, and what is fun. really Korean? It's really vague. But in the Philippines, um, we are known to have a very hard, sta- a very high standard when it comes to the vocals. Yeah, I've um, seen for, that. on performers, and um, it's actually kind of weird. I mean, this what I'm about to say might be controversial, but um, here's here's my take on that. Um, in in the right. Philippines, uh, show business industry, if you are Filipino, you are given extra high standards. Like you have to be good at yeah. everything. Not not only not only in singing you have to be you have to look perfect right but That's um, a lot of pressure yeah if you are someone though from if you're a white guy or, or, or someone a foreigner um <laughs> as long as you look good you're fine um you will be trained anyway and you'll get better right. so that's how i don't know it, it could be controversial that's... but some people might agree here basically what you were saying before though is basically if you're a white person or a westerner person you come on here and you sing and your voice sounds like a horse oh that's that's normal i expect that <laughs> 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 You got still coming over here sounding like a horse? Oh, no, no, no. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. 
<laughs> All right, man. Let's go. Let's keep going. No matter how much P-pop or K-pop is influenced by other styles of music, they will still be categorized as P-pop and K-pop because there will always be the element in the Filipino personality or in the Korean personality that you can't just hide. So even if OPM or P-pop idol groups nowadays are inspired by K-pop or other different types of music, without the Pinoy or the Filipino element, the Filipino people in it, it wouldn't be the same. Alright guys, so that was it Absolutely. for today's video. I feel like this is indeed the topic that we should well, always you can't make be so passionate about. Without Something that Pinoy, you can't make K-pop without Koreans. <laughs> exactly, that's just, that's just how it is, man. <laughs> Something that involves two or more cultures. Now I'm very excited to know what your thoughts are. Please let me know in the comments down below. Guys, enjoy this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. That was, that definitely gave us a lot of conversation starters. Yeah, man. We, we talked about a lot of stuff and it was very eye-opening and, uh, and, and educational. So that's it, guys. Um, that is, uh, well, is P-pop copying K-pop? I'm sure you already know. Um, it's a quite interesting topic and um, we really learned a lot. What was your key takeaway, bro? My key takeaway is basically that everything can be seen as copying, like I said earlier, but at the end of the day, it's more about inspiration and, and more it's more about who you ident identify as a person and who you identify um, versus like what um, something is. You know what I mean? So for me personally, I feel like P-pop isn't copying K-pop because I personally have an understanding that you can be inspired by anything and, and it's hard to be original nowadays. Personally, I don't think K-pop is copying K-pop. I think it has its own identity. It was inspired by K-pop, but then it molded and morphed itself into what it is now, which is P-pop. So that's the takeaway of it. <laughs>